You, you've also talked about the, the emotional adjustment from game one to game two when a team loses, but what's the biggest adjustment you think you guys need to make? Is that part of it? Is it the emotional? You know, I, uh, I think um, boxing out and, and making sure we're physical enough on the, on the glass. I thought we played hard in a lot of areas, and then when the shot went up, we let our guard down. And um, so as a result, you know, they got 17 offensive boards, um, I think 10, nine or 10 additional field goal attempts than we did. And, um, you know, you can pick apart the game, and there's always going to be stuff that you can do better here or there. Uh, but when it comes down to it, um, you throw, throw the schemes out the window, throw strategy out the window. It comes down to who's going to get the, who's going to get the ball, who's going to get the long rebounds, the loose balls. And um, they did that much better than we did, and that's why they won. Coach, Kirk, you, uh, last night you were kind of concerned about uh, Monk getting those 14 uh, free throws. Uh, what, what did you see as far as him getting in the paint like that and drawing those fouls? Yeah, he did a great job. Uh, he had a hell of a game, and um, I thought we um, got out of sorts a little bit in transition a couple of times. That led to uh, some of his free throws, and then uh, just giving him angles that uh, we could have done a better job with. Uh, but give him credit; he he had a great game, and we've got to make sure we we take better better care of him tomorrow. What was your impression of the atmosphere last night? It was great. The atmosphere was uh, incredible. It was so loud in there and the fans were so excited to you know, have the Kings back in the playoffs and uh, I enjoyed it. It was really fun. Are you impressed with what Coach Brown has done in one season? Yeah, Mike's been amazing. Um, you know, they've put together a really good roster and he and his staff have, uh, have just put the pieces together perfectly and uh, they got a really good team. They've had a great season and uh, you know, they, they were great last night. Yeah. Steve, the, the last uh, playoff game that Harrison Barnes played in was game seven for you guys. And so was it, was it weird to see him, uh, you know, playing against you? And what, what do you think his legacy for the Warriors team is? Um, number one, I love Harrison. He's, uh, he's one of my all-time favorites. Um, I think his legacy with the Warriors is that he's one of the foundational figures that started all of this, this run. Um, Obviously, um, you know, helped us win a championship, helped us win 73 games and set a record. But it was much more than that. It was the, the work ethic, um, the uh, just the identity of, of what he represented, um, you know, the, the, the versatility defensively, um, the ability to play with multiple lineups. Um, the, the character, high character, um, great teammate, all of that, I think Harrison really helped establish uh, who, who this team would become. I know you may not want to tip all this off, but is Wiggins like, physically able to start to think now? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't talked to Rick yet today. Um, I think uh, you know, he has to um, look at, at Wiggs, and he's got to go through some treatment today. And I haven't talked to Wiggs either. Um, but uh, I thought uh, he got a little bit tired in the second half yesterday, which was to be expected. But 28 minutes, pretty good for his, uh, his first game back. And um, we'll, we'll kind of assess and see where we are. Steve, Kings stay pretty big, you know, always playing a center. Uh, you, you mentioned the rebounds. I know you guys don't tend to go big, but was just the size part of that, uh, part of that that they were bigger than you? Well, I would I would argue. You know, we played <clears throat> we played Loon and Draymond 32 and 34 minutes respectively. So we we did stay big for much of the game, um, and then you know we alternate those two guys. Um, so um, it, it didn't feel like. It was uh, a size, and when you watch the tape, it's just um, shot goes up, and as you're looking looking at the ball, and can't do that. And the shot goes up, you have to find the free man and go go hit him, go go box him out. And um, we didn't do that, so that has nothing to do with with size. Steve, yes. beyond the defense, beyond the defense, um, or beyond the rebounding, excuse me. When you look at the defense on video, was it mostly schematic? Was it? Guys just not staying in front of their guys, or how do you sort of assess overall the yeah. overall defense? Yeah, transition. It started with transition. Um, we made a lot of mistakes there, and that that led to some early buckets. I thought we did some great things defensively um, during the game, and and guys, you know, played their their butts off. And and uh, but as I said, we let our guard down when the shot went up. If you look at our defense, just. Um, 
in terms of forcing misses and um, you know getting into our coverages and and um, initial defense, we did a pretty good job. But when you give 17 extra chances, it's really tough. We talked a little bit about shot selection after last night. Mm -hmm. what, what did you see from it? You said you weren't completely satisfied. Was it just rush shots? Was it forcing it? What? Wrong yeah, I think, um, you know, our, our team always kind of walks a fine line. You know, we, we want our guys aggressive and loose and free, and we want them to, uh, to be uninhibited out there. Um, but at the same time, we want them to recognize that we can go from good to great. You know, and we had a lot of good shots. Um, we can get great shots, and we know that. We watch, watching the film, we have to, uh, to, to make them guard for longer stretches. Uh, and, um, you know, the, we, we know that when we do that, it doesn't matter who we're playing, when we do that, um, instead of settle for the first open three, you know, you move it again, move it again, get the ball swung side to side, um, you get a better one. And that's, that's something we have to look at. Mike Brown talks about how it only gets harder from here today. How important is game two and being able to even the series at this point? Uh, game two is important. Every game is important. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't ever. You know, really say anything's uh, must win until you you're, you have three losses. Then it's then it's actually must win. Um, but we've been through everything in the last decade with this team. These guys know um, that what it's about, and you just you, you take it a day at a time. Today's a, a day where we watch film and recover and uh, see where we can get better. Come back tomorrow. Um, you know, put our best effort out there. Whatever the result is, we go back to work the next day, and you just keep doing that over and over again until the series is over. And everything else is just hyperbole, and you don't worry about any of that. With how much familiarity there is between you and Mike Brown, does that make it easier for you guys coaching or harder Sorry. because you guys know each other so well? Um, I don't think it makes a huge difference. Um, you know, I, I, I think, um, you know, he knows our team really well. Um, and so, you know, there's a couple things that that um, that we um, saw last night that we uh, probably um, anticipated. Um, that and and Mike's great. He's a really strategic uh, coach. He's he's got a great eye for the game, and and he knows our players. So, um, it, it, you know, he's he's great. He does a good job. But at the same time, it's the players are out there, um, you know, making plays and. If if we play that game and we actually finish our defensive possessions with box outs, then um, we're sitting here up 1-0 and, and feeling pretty good. So, um, but that's how it goes. There's always what ifs. You watch the tape and and you you move forward. Steve, how did you see the job you did against Sabonis? Uh, did a pretty good job against Sabonis and the dribble handoffs. Uh, you know, we took away uh, some of their pet actions and then they went to more you know pick and roll with with Fox. Um, but you know these these games and these series, um, it, it's um, for everybody. It's whack-a-mole. You know, you take away one thing and something else pops up. Um, it, it, all these all these guys are great players on both teams, and so you never stop and think, all right, we, we solved that problem. Right, right. You know, and now we just got to take care of this one. So tomorrow could be totally different, um, and it probably will be for both teams. So you just have to try to take care of the stuff you can take care of. And clean up the things that you think you can do better. Does that kind of show with the Aaron? What did you see on the <coughs> in terms of where he got away from? Uh, I thought um, second half they really went to more pick and roll, and uh, he got into the middle of the paint um, and started knocking down his his mid range stuff. And I think once he knocked down a few of those, he got confident from the three point line. And um, as I said, you know, he made four threes in the second half. Um, so you, you kind of have to tip your hat to him uh, on that because um, he's a guy who um, is, you know, you, you, what you really fear is him getting right to the front of the rim. And uh, we did a decent job of that, but um, we could make things harder uh, on him for sure. Does that game sort of show how potent they are offensively? I mean, like you said, you guys played pretty well defensively, obviously gave up some boards. You look up and they got 126. Yeah, I mean, yeah number one ranked offense right. for a reason. Yeah. Uh, what, what did you think of Jonathan's game last night, and what's sort of the ideal role for him in this series for you guys? Yeah, he did some some good things. Jonathan, um, you know, he's he gives us uh, another athletic defender to put on the point of attack, whether it's um, you know Fox or or Monk. Um, you know, we can um, we can utilize him in a number of ways. Um, 
I'd like to see him um, rebound. You know, he didn't have a rebound last night, and that's got to be a, a focal point for him and for our whole team. Like I said, we, we can keep talking about everything, but it still comes back to, to rebounds. And uh, But I thought J.K. did a, a really nice job in a lot of ways, and um, and he can get better. And I mean, just, hasn't rebounded a lot, you know, in his entire NBA career in the long one. But is that – how much of that is because he's mostly assigned to – defense or is there just some times where he's not turning around and yeah, going he's, get... he's a, just a very young player and and um, so he's still learning um, you know as he goes and um, there's stuff on tape where you know we'll we'll point out certain things to him and you know he's had a really good year for us he's gotten dramatically better you know over over this course of the season so uh, process stays the same we'll show film and show him areas where he can get better and uh, and, and you know he'll he'll continue to work is there a sense of, uh, hey, look, we, we've seen this movie before. We, we, we know how to do this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bird with the, with the dippers. <laughs> I'm not even going to expound on that. Was, yes, yes. We all watch the non-staff minutes, clearly. We ask you about them all yeah. the time. When it's a playoff game and you feel it, it's you know six points, eight points, nine points, and he's sitting there, how anxious do you get and start recalibrating whether you should get him back in quicker? Uh, no, I, I, we played it um, how we're going to play it uh, last night. You know, um, 48 hours in between um, games one and two. I think he played 38 minutes. Um, it's uh, we just didn't do a very good job uh, while he was out. I don't I don't regret resting him. I think he's a, a player who has to work. Uh, so hard at both ends um, with the ball in his hands, but also defensively. And um, I think you know, playing Steph 40 plus minutes um, isn't isn't the answer. The answer is, is handling the non-Steph minutes better, and that's something we've got to do. Now, as far as 72 hours between the next yeah. games, by the way. <laughs> you mean games yes, two, two and three? three. Yeah. yeah. Is the thinking different? I guess when you have two days in between. Maybe yeah. we'll, we'll see when, <laughs> once we get there. The way you do it, you do have Steph and Draymond out together, just because Draymond's got to start the second and fourth. Is that something that could be tweaked there? Sure, sure. We we look at all that stuff. We've already talked about that this morning as a staff, and uh, those are possible adjustments. But um, then you watch the tape and you go, all right, um, you know, a couple missed free throws and a and a mistake in transition. It's a five point swing. Um, and then a couple of missed box outs. And it's like, all right, was that rotational? Not really. It's like we got to box out better. And so if we, you know, we got to get back better. And if we do those things, then we're not even talking about rotation patterns right now. So, you know, you got to get those guys out at some point. You got to get them both rest. They both played great last night. We're, we just got to clean up the other stuff. Coach, were you happy with, with the pace of the game? Uh, happy? I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, pace, pace was fine. Yeah, it was a really fast game. That's what. That's how we like it. That's how they like it. Um, we just got to do a better job in all the, all the areas that I, I've talked about. What did you make of the outside? Outside of the arena, inside was pretty incredible. I didn't see it. I was inside. Yeah, yeah. Steve, with, with Steph's minutes, um, how do you dictate whether he's going to go 12-6 or go something different? Is it matchup based? Is it game feel? I mean, how do you? How do you dictate when he's going to sit and when he's going to rest? Uh, I mean, we've seen different yeah. variations over the years. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it it will depend on how he's feeling, how the game is going. But um, the one thing that we've settled into, he's going to get one break each half. He's not going to get two breaks each half like he was doing in the middle of the season. Mm -hmm. So that break could come at the end of the first with two minutes left. It could come, you know, at the top of the second. But um, either way, I think we're going to sit him 10 minutes a game. That's uh, that, that's what I think is best for, for him and for the team. Thanks. As, as you were tossing, turning, whatever, on last night's game. Uh, first and foremost, it was an amazing atmosphere. Uh, rowdy in there last night. But, um, you know, just come back, uh, watch the tape, you know, see we got to get better on the rebounding. You know, they they hit us on the rebounding pretty hard. So come back, um, you know, take that accountability and come back and, you know, just continue to work on little things. Did How did you feel physical? Uh, no, we knew they would come out physical. physical and, um, you know, they're on our home floor. So, you know, they're hype, energetic, you know, first playoff game in a while. So 
uh, you know, we just come back in second, second game, you know, do what we supposed to do, hit back, and, you know, I think we, we figured out. How did you feel physically? You left the game at one point in the first half? No, yeah, I was good. Just uh, had to fix something real quick and come right back, but uh, no, I was good. Okay. Beyond the rebounding, how do you feel you guys played defensively? I mean, you held them to, I think, 55, which is reasonable in the first half, but they kind of... Yeah, yeah, it's, um, them second chance points, you know, offense yeah. rebounds, you know, gives them, uh, you know, extra possessions and, you know, long down, you know, late down the line. I think that's what really made the, you know, difference at the end. What was the key to, to Fox getting rolling in the third quarter? Uh, you know, he hit a he hit a few threes, you know, got him going. And then, uh, you know, his mid-range started coming along. So he just, you know, built confidence and confidence. And later down the stretch, you know, he just made shots. I realize this isn't a basketball question, but did you see what happened with E40? And do you have any comment on what do you, what'd you think of him getting ejected? No, I didn't. I didn't see what happened, but uh, you know, is Forty's like a he's like an uncle to me. So uh, just make sure he was good, and you know, everybody, our guys took care of him. So um, besides that, I don't know what really went down. As long as he's good. Did you talk to him? No, not yet. But um, I, I got word that he's fine, so everything's good. Were you kind of surprised because? Normally, he gives Sacramento a lot of love, you know, through his record. No, yeah, you know, it's, it's a little, it's a little weird, you know. Uh, I guess it's just a, you know, playoff intensity, playoff atmosphere. You know, fans is, you know, gonna be fans. So uh, I really don't, didn't expect it, but you know, you never know. Gary, what's the key to limiting those 17 offensive rebounds in second chance points like you moved over to? No, uh, we just gotta hit back, you know. Uh, better yet, hit first, you know, and you know, just make sure we. You know, when shot goes up, we find guys we know who who's crashing, who's what not, and we just you know make it an emphasize. Oh, you guys are great. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? I feel wonderful. What, were you surprised by anything last night? No. The G one C was exactly how you thought it was going to be. Wait, the what arena? was the question? The, the arena. The one center was it exactly how you thought it was going to be? Yeah, I think they probably needed more cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> always, yeah. always need more cowboys. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was alluding to that SNL skit. I know. <laughs> so, no yeah. way. I know. We play okay. it. Good. Let's play. Good. Because that yeah. one was funny. That was funny. As you look at the video, what did you got? How did you? How do you assess how you played defensively, and what can you do differently in game two to, to slow them down a little bit? Uh, rebound and limit our fouling. You what know, uh, when you give that team, who's a very talented offensive team. Many second chance opportunities are going to convert, so that would be an emph em emphasis within ourselves tomorrow is not getting punked on the glass. With the 17 offensive rebounds, how much is that mental versus kind of physical looming around? Well, it's mental in the, in the case of being mindful about crashing the glass and boxing out your man, and then uh, the physical side is just trying to exceed their force, and I know we're capable. It looks like you have uh, stabilized uh, De'Aaron Fox in the first half, and then the second half, he's just kind of got moved. What contributes to that second half? Getting, getting around? Uh, I mean, he's a great player. He's an all-star. He's their franchise, so he's going to get go off at times. But um, tomorrow, I think it will just be about uh, limiting their other guys even more. I mean, we can let De'Aaron do his thing, but if we uh, you know, take away Malik's Cut his free throws in half and don't let Trey Lyles go off. I think we're in a good spot. Hey, Clay, playing against Harrison Bar Barnes bring, probably brings back some memories. What, do you, what, do, what is his legacy to you with the Warriors? Oh, he's a champ. Uh, he's a Black Falcon, and without him, we don't have the championship in 2015 or the finals appearance in 2016. And uh, HB's a great friend, but right now he's my opposition, so I'm going to do everything I can to hopefully end his season. But. Uh, I cherish those memories with Harrison when we were in our early 20s. Now, in our 30s, it happens really fast. But I mean, he's a great warrior, and he'll his legacy will live on forever with the Warriors because he's on a banner. How's it feel playing against Coach Brown? Oh, it's fun. I mean, we've got a lot of guys over there, whether it's Luke or LB or Coach Brown. But uh, same thing with HB. You know, uh, I'm friends with all of them. But right now, I'm trying to do everything I can to. You know, not let them win games. There was a there was a time where they were inbounding the ball. Brown was parking out something. You were guarding the guy inbounding the ball, and it just it just felt like you you felt man. I, I've heard all this stuff before from Coach Brown. Mm -hmm. That I have. <laughs> Coach Brown has endless amount of energy, and you got to respect that. It's hard to. That's the hardest thing as a coach is bringing it every night because there's no nights off when you're head coach.
We're talking about Forty getting tossed. Unfortunate. I love Forty. He's been our biggest supporter for years, and I hope they write that shit because he deserves to be there by our bench. And in my time knowing him, he's always been respectful. He's always been considerate of those around him. So it was uh, very weird to see, and I hope it's resolved. With how much familiarity you have with Coach Brown, um, how much have you seen his coaching style evolve from when he was with the Warriors to now? Um, I haven't been able to see it on a first-hand basis because uh, he hasn't been with us last year. But before that, when Steve was out with medical issues, Coach Brown stepped in and did an incredible job for two playoff runs. And we would not be, have won the championships without him those years. And uh, he's doing great things with the Kings, obviously. And uh, But the goal is to you know, beat him. He's a tough guy to prepare for because he uh, studies the game so much, but um, luckily we have another opportunity to get right tomorrow. Clay, is the E40 thing, Mike, thing distracting at all? No. No? Okay. Clay, one thing Mike just said was that as series goes on, they, they get harder. Just in your experience, in, in what ways do playoff series get more difficult as it go? Um, both teams will make major adjustments <clears throat> and it just, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how many games we're going to have in the 120s. The games seem to slow down as the series progress. So uh, it just gets a little more physical and a little more ugly at times. And it's the playoffs. Uh, you got to win any way you can. Clay, does Andrew look like he's ready to start? I know you don't make that decision, but. Yeah, Andrew looks incredible. I said it last night. I mean, to cut and defend and block shots and play above the rim and just do what he does. After two months of not playing an NBA game, it's just a testament to his ability and his work ethic. He stayed ready the whole time, and we're so happy to have him back. Uh, he elevates us to another level. Well. You guys didn't seem like you were getting started that you wanted inside with the tortoise. Why do you think you guys went away from that in the I don't know. We don't. I don't. I just play. I just take the open shot or make the open pass. Um, and uh, I don't like go out there and think. Uh, I just try to get the best shot available. And last night we took some tough ones, but we still had a chance to win. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Is there something to be said for you know, the, the good shot versus great shot debate in that? And that you guys took good shots, but there were great shots to be had. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to hear from those who don't play what a great shot is, but you know, uh, it's like I'm just, we're just going to do what we do. And I, it's gonna take, we're going to take tough shots, we're going to make tough shots. Been doing it for 10 years, and I'm not going to get discouraged after one bad shooting night. Like, freaking A, I've been doing this for a long time. How do you feel about the way you, Steph, and Draymond and Lowe have been through pretty much everything you guys. That's right. That veteran status you guys have. How can that help you as this series goes on? Or can it help you? Does it make a difference? Um, well, you just stay calm in the face of adversity. You don't panic when it doesn't go your way. And you just be yourself. Do those three things, and I know we'll be great. Clay, how do you feel about the looks that you got from three-point range and the way that they defended you? It felt great. Every, t every time I shoot the ball, it feels great. And I'll never have a mindset other than that. Clay, what was mentioned on the broadcast yesterday that you may be seeking a max extension this offseason? Obviously, right now, you're trying to focus on the task at hand, which is this series. But is that something like you are seeking? Um, I'm seeking a championship. And then everything else after that will, will uh, play itself out. Did you get any boating or sailing in before <laughs> you came down here? I did not. But that's the weather gets a little warmer. For sure. <laughs>